Tattva Bodha Part 3 The Universe You need to be fully familiar with the material from the previous videos in this series, Tattva Bodha Parts 1 and 2, before watching this. We know that matter cannot be created or destroyed. We also know that matter and energy are equivalent because one can be changed into the other. So we will avoid the word creation and use the word manifestation instead. Similarly, we will avoid the word destruction and use the words unmanifestation or resolution instead. Tattva Bodha proceeds to explain how the universe manifested. We are familiar with the definition of causal state from our previous videos. The causal form of all matter is called Maya. The universe manifested from this Maya. First, the five subtle elements were created. Each of these elements is associated with a unique sense perception, sound, touch, form, as revealed by light, taste and smell. From Maya, space was born, which is associated with sound. From space, air was born, which is associated with sound and touch. From air, fire was born, which is associated with sound, touch and form. From fire, water was born which is associated with sound, touch, form, and taste. And finally, from water, earth was born, which is associated with sound, touch, form, taste, and smell. All matter has three characteristics, sattvic, rajasic, and tamasic. Sattvic is the highest knowledge aspect, Rajasic is the medium action aspect and Tamasic is the base inert nature. From the Sattvic nature of the five subtle elements came the five physiological sense organs. Note, these are subtle physiological powers, not anatomy. From the Sattvic nature of space, the year was born. From the sattvic nature of air, the skin was born. From the sattvic nature of fire, the eye was born. From the sattvic nature of water, the tongue was born. From the sattvic nature of earth, the nose was born. Then, from the sattvic nature of all five elements, the inner organs of the mind and intellect were created. From the Rajasic aspects of the five elements, the physiological organs of action were born. Again, note that these are the physiological powers, not the anatomy. From the Rajasic nature of space, the organ of speech, the mouth, evolved. From the Rajasic nature of air, the organ of grasping, hands, evolved. From the Rajasic nature of fire, the organ of locomotion, legs, evolved. From the rajasic nature of water, the organ of excretion, the anus, evolved. From the rajasic nature of earth, the organ of reproduction, genitalia, evolved. Everything we have discussed so far is still subtle matter. Now, from the tamasic nature of the five subtle elements, the gross elements are created by mixing in the following proportions. One half part of each element is combined with one eighth parts of the other four to create the gross elements. One half part subtle space combined with one eighth part each of the other four subtle elements makes gross space. One half part subtle air 
combined with one eighth part each of the other four subtle elements makes gross air. One half part subtle fire combined with one eighth part each of the other four subtle elements makes gross fire. One half part subtle water combined with one eighth part each of the other four subtle elements makes gross water. And one half part subtle earth combined with one eighth part each of the other four subtle elements makes gross earth. And finally, from the five gross elements, the gross human body is born. In the last video, we discussed how consciousness is separate from matter, but pervades it, just as space pervades everything. This consciousness is called Atma. Tattva Bodha now gives us additional details that explain how I become conscious. Our subtle body has a reflecting medium that is receptive to this consciousness. It is able to tune into consciousness just as a radio is able to tune into a broadcast signal. When the radio is worn out, we are unable to tune into consciousness and our gross bodies die. Our subtle bodies are receivers that are enlivened by consciousness. The original all-pervading consciousness or Atma is technically called Brahman by the Vedas. My reflected consciousness is called Jiva Atma or Jivatma. This is similar to a mirror reflecting sunlight. The nature of the reflected sunlight and the original sunlight are the same. Similarly, the nature of my reflected consciousness, Jivatma, and the original, all-pervading consciousness, Brahman, are the same. Tattva Bodha goes on to say that people who realize this can attain liberation even while they are alive, Jivan Mukti. Let us move on to the next video in the series, Tattva Bodha Part 4. Law of Karma.